Podcasts are pretty common. So what makes the Uncommon Podcast uncommon? Well, it's all in our name. I'm your host, Noah Weiss, and we at Uncommon Sports Group understand the unique pressures and temptations that come with a career in the sport industry. We provide Uncommon training that helps you successfully navigate common challenges. Hit the follow button on this podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Check out our website and become Uncommon. What's up, USG fam? Welcome back to The Uncommon Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Noah Weiss, and I'm very excited to have a friend of mine and longtime USG member, Kyle Yost, in the studio with me today. Kyle is a Taylor University alum and spent four years there as a student assistant with the men's basketball team before transitioning to the University of Northwestern St. Paul to be the assistant women's basketball coach and just recently accepted a head coaching position for the women's basketball team at Covenant College. Kyle has been involved with our ministry since 2019 when he took part in the Minneapolis mission trip and has been active with Moam slash USG uh, ever since. Kyle, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Man. Absolutely, brother. And Kyle, I want to start with the most important part of your life, which is your relationship with Christ. And what's unique about your background is you grew up uh, of a different faith. You grew up in a Mormon household, which is a unique part of your testimony. So share with us what that experience was like growing up uh, in that faith and how you related to God in that season of your life. Yeah, for sure. So a little bit of a different upbringing than uh, what most people listening to this podcast might be uh, familiar with, but uh, the Mormon faith, uh, very, very different. A lot of good things about the Mormon faith, a lot of good things that uh, I appreciated about mm. growing up in, um, you know, a, a Mormon household. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of things well. Uh, obviously, the biggest difference is, uh, you know, we as believers wouldn't say that they they, they are Christ followers. Um, mm -hmm. There's a there's a difference there. And so, in terms of how I related to God, I think um, growing up, I definitely had an understanding of a lot of the disciplines and things like that, and, and how we as um, somebody who are, I wouldn't say believers, but um, people of, of faith um, would, would act and what mm. those look like um, you know behaviors um, mm -hmm. some of those things naturally I didn't have to deal with growing up especially transitioning into uh, you know life as a believer um, mm. but yeah no I wouldn't say I related to God in any way um, definitely heard about God mm. definitely uh, there were times that you know um, there was teaching out of the Bible but uh, the Mormon Church obviously s speaks from a um, the Book of Mormon, and so mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a different testament. Uh, I, d I don't believe it to be a testament of, of Jesus or, or his um, teachings of his time on on mm -hmm. the earth. And so, um, but yeah, there are some good things good things about family and community yeah. and disciplines, things like that. Things that I appreciate about growing up in uh, the Mormon Church. But yeah, it, just a different upbringing for sure. Absolutely, and you know, Kyle, I do a lot of these testimony based podcast and even just hearing a lot of testimonies in my life i think so many people don't have this testimony can't relate to having a different faith either you are a christian growing up or you are around christianity and so you know i think for you to have that different upbringing is unique and awesome and i think it's cool that the lord used that um in, in a unique way and speaking of that kyle i think what people want to know is what led you away from those beliefs you grew up with and what challenges did you face in that season when you did start to walk away from that. Right, for sure. So uh, obviously, you know, growing up, you have your teenage years, very little uh, rebellious, and you start to think for yourself. Right. Um, you know, theologically, uh, theologically, you can get into it, um, but I, I personally hold the belief that the Spirit comes into you mm. um, at times often that we don't recognize. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times uh, theologians will talk about non-believers being able to pinpoint that uh, I can't pinpoint the exact, uh, you know, time and place it happens, but right. definitely my freshman year of high school is when I believe that to have happened. Um, you know, really that was the time where I felt, you know, a change, um, a little mm. bit of discomfort and, and things like that and what was happening in uh, the Mormon church, you know, they, they would say that they're, they're followers of Christ. And uh, my big thing was, if you call yourself a follower of Christ, why are we not teaching from the word of God? Mm. 
And so, yeah. you know, questions of those things between, uh, you know, myself, church leadership, things like yeah. that, friends, mentors, uh, mm-hmm. never got a good answer uh, for that. And so, um, uh, some other stuff in life kind of, kind of pushing me that way too, and asking questions to other people outside of the, the Mormon faith. And, um, eventually, mm-hmm. you know, Christ led me, uh, kind of away from the Mormon church, obviously, and, mm-hmm. um, put some really good people in my life, um, during that time to, that to really took the time to pour into me and answer questions that I had, ask questions um, yeah. to make me think um, about some things critically. And, yeah. um, you know, guys like Scott and um, people like that really pushing me and helping me to mm-hmm. grow and ask the right questions. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, some difficulty in trying to mm-hmm. – figure out what you have always thought to be true of a Christian um, yeah. theologically and what is right and what is wrong. Uh, I think that's a process that's still happening now as mm. we continue to learn who God is and totally. uh, sanctifying ourselves and, and, you know, becoming more like him and understanding who he is. That, that's a lifelong process, but, um, you know, there's some theological things that are pretty deep, mm-hmm. um, especially those first three or four years that, you know, you have to unlearn uh, when you come yeah. from a, a religion like that. Right. And it's just very similar in the way it's presented to Christianity, but mm-hmm. uh, a lot of theological differences that you just need time to work through and people to speak truth and, and going back to the Word again, um, going to what the, what the Word says and who He is and trying to learn through that. And mm-hmm. yeah, process, but that was some of the difficulties that I went through. Um, yeah. Continue to go through now, so. Totally. Yeah, I know. I think the... That's the interesting part of, of you coming from a different belief system is that unlearning and relearning. And, you know, I think for every believer, like I think everyone listening could relate that there is a theological um, uh, uphill climb that we all take on this journey. There's, there's really no point in your journey with the Lord where you know everything, right? Even the uh, heavyweights of Christian theolog- uh, theology don't have a perfect understanding of everything. And there's disagreements. That's why we have so many denominations. And there's these little things that we all uh, can't really agree on. So I think um, we're all in that process for sure. So I appreciate you sharing that. I think a lot of our listeners could relate to that point of your journey of uh, we're learning constantly and it doesn't matter where you're at in your faith. That's a, that's a part of it for sure. And, you know, Kyle, I think the question that I, I wrote down is similar to the, the previous one, but really what was that convincing factor or thing that led you to the Christian faith when you finally decided to surrender to Christ. Right. Yeah. No. So, um, I think those kind of that first three or four years of, of when I was really going, uh, deep and trying to figure out who Christ was, I think a lot of the things I was focusing on was, you know, my disciplines. So what am I supposed to do? You know, my active role in my salvation. Right. And mm-hmm. I think the big thing that's missing in the, the LDS church and the Mormon faith is, um, that the, the essential component of Christ and, and his, you know, crucifixion and, and mm-hmm. his death so that we can, you know, live and, and be with him again, heaven yeah. one day. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I think they would be able to vocalize that right um but in how they live there is a lot of pressure and importance put on their actions um yeah which yes as as believers our works matter right Mm -hmm. and as we continue to to come closer to christ our actions change and when we become more like him hopefully as he his his spirit fills us up and um as we're filling ourselves up in his word and things like that and prayer and worship and things like that but um you know, those first three or four years, is I was focusing on that a lot, focusing on what I was doing rather than uh, focusing on, you know, who he is and trying to know him better and, and to be close in relationship with him. I think it's something that even today, like, I still struggle with at times of, yeah. yes, my actions matter, but it, it's the heart of it. It's like, mm-hmm. how do I truly come closer to Christ and truly know who he is mm-hmm. and who he's calling me to be. And, yeah. um, I think, you know, we'll get into this a little bit, but, um, I, I think that the story of the last year for me has really shown me, um, how little control I have yeah. of life and, and how important his guidance and his promptings mm-hmm. and his leadership practically in the day to day, um, is and just how inadequate we are without him. Yeah. Um, Amen. and so that those things for the first three or four years were, were the things that, really challenged me um mm-hmm. and still do um yeah you know in my walk with christ i don't know you know 
Yeah, Kyle, I think it's, you know, for any Christian, that, that last point you made it stood out to me of trying to understand the balance between the works that we do and the free gift of grace. It, it's a really hard dichotomy because you understand that your works don't achieve salvation, doesn't achieve a closer relationship with the Lord, right? But there is an element of, you know, James chapter 2, right? Faith is evidenced by works. Um, something I've, I've struggled with in my journey and tried to figure out, and I know I say I think we can all relate to that as believers of trying to figure out, you know, what does that mean? How do I fit that in and fit those pieces in? And I think, too, you know, sport industry as a whole and working in athletics is you get out what you put in mentality, right? And so I think many people that work in this industry know that my success on the court, my success on the field, my success as, uh, you know, an AD or as an administrator is going to allow me to climb the ladder. And so we can almost think that way subconsciously with faith of, Oh, if I if I am in a Bible study and in a church and serving the Lord elsewhere and sharing my faith, then that means God loves me. And it's like, no, it's like there's no ladder to climb, right? Once you come to Christ by faith, that's salvation. But then there is, right, those things that we do uh, as believers to walk with Jesus closely, to abide with Him, and to serve Him as He calls us. So um, it's not an easy thing at all. So I appreciate you sharing on that. And um, I think we can relate to that as believers as well in this industry for sure. And Kyle, obviously, I mentioned in the intro, basketball has played a really pivotal role uh, in your life journey. And I guess I'm just curious, what drove you to get involved with basketball in your undergraduate years? And how did those experiences push you to pursue it as a career? Right, for sure. Basketball has obviously played a huge part of my life. Um, it's one of my biggest passions in life, you know. Yeah. Um, the Lord and, and basketball are two things that, you know, I can talk about, uh, you know, anytime, uh, yeah. 24-7. So. Um, yeah, I grew up in Indiana. Um, you know, you knew that it's different in Indiana. Different. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's constant. You grow up with it. You love it. You do it. Um, and so I grew up, had a really good high school, um, experience basketball wise. They really let a fire under me. Um, had some really good coaches. Um, I don't know, um, where I would have been if I yeah. hadn't been, uh, in the places I was, I don't know what I would have gotten into mm. or whatever, but uh, had really good high school experiences, um, basketball wise. Had some success and state championship, and just a lot of wins and things like that. And obviously, mm-hmm. when you have success, you want to continue to to strive for that. Without a doubt. Um, so when I got into undergrad, um, I, I knew at a young age, probably about thirteen or fourteen, I wanted to coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew I was never anywhere near close enough uh, of being good enough to play. And so, mm-hmm. next best thing is coaching. And so, yeah. um, I think watching the leaders in seeing how they structured teams important to young people and, and the impact they had on my life and the other people around me's life. And I wanted to do that. I always wanted to lead. Mm. I always felt called to lead and, and didn't know what that looked like as a, as a young person. And so yeah. got to uh, eventually Taylor, um, got involved with basketball and uh, really got to give kudos to, to my coach at Taylor, Josh Andrews. He uh, really took me under his wing, uh, discipled me really well. He mm. understood that I had a desire to coach, and yeah. uh, he gave me opportunities to to grow and learn. And um, again, just mentored me really well, uh, helped me to tie basketball back in with faith and just mm. keeping it in perspective. He always talks about uh, it's a stupid little orange basketball we're trying to put through a metal rim. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. um, using it to glorify God, using it to build people up and, and develop kingdom leaders to to go out and serve others for for christ after graduation so Mm, that's awesome man yeah it's awesome you know i think it's perspective in sports is huge and i think that's what's cool about your testimony with taylor is it was more than basketball right and you learn how to be a coach and a mentor and a leader and you know for me obviously you, you know my background is i was a student manager and i learned a lot but it was at a school where you know you're mopping the floor or you're passing out water and you're not really getting coaching experience you're essentially a glorified water boy in a lot of instances and i think what you had is legitimate coaching experience legitimate like assistant coaching experience which is um pivotal right and i think it speaks loudly of to where you are now the benefit of that so i think it's cool to hear that and obviously taylor is an awesome um school and organization and um, a lot of our usg folks are taylor grads or currently taylor students so I think there's a, a lot of love for that school here for sure for sure shout out taylor shout out taylor and you know kyle and uh, something that i think is probably challenging for you to talk about is is the season of difficulty you've faced uh this past year in 2022 so i'd love for you to talk about 
the challenges you faced in that season and how you were able to overcome those? Yeah, for sure. So the last 14 months of my life have uh, been a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, a lot of people have reached out and asked, you know, what's going on? Like, what's going on in your life? It's kind of been crazy. Um, yeah, so uh, kind of going back to, to last May, uh, May of 22, I was in a, a relationship. I was engaged to a girl. Uh, I was graduating from Taylor. Uh, had accepted a job out in Pacific Northwest. Was accepted to a grad school out there. I uh, was kind of planning life, you know, planning a wedding and, and getting ready for the next stage. Um, and, uh, you know, later I, I would come to find out that's not what the Lord had planned for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of reflecting now, hindsight, uh, a lot of those plans were plans that I had made for myself. And so mm. um, anybody that knows me knows I want marriage. That's a, it's a big desire of my heart. And yeah. so uh, really, I think in an untimely manner, forced that in a relationship. Um, mm-hmm. Probably wasn't ready for that. Uh, I don't think she was ready for that, um, but you know, graduation, going to a small Christian school, there's there's pressure there. Yeah, I think some of the listeners might be able to relate to that. But um, yeah, so three days before I graduated from Taylor, um, me and her actually ended things. Uh, hmm. We uh, we had a clean cut and um, kind of just decided that 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 wasn't in the cards, and so um, it was a surprise to me. Yeah, and so trying to figure out what was next, you know, I, I planned a whole life, a job, a um, education. Uh, you know, the next step for me was somewhere that you know she was, and, and planning a life for her. And so, mm. uh, when, when that part of the equation is taken out, uh, that changes yeah. things. And so, absolutely. Um, last summer was uh, a long, long, grueling uh, period of grieving and, and prayer and trying to understand what the Lord was doing. Mm. Uh, I think even in the moment, I could have told you. Um, you know, he was trying to teach me um, that he's in control um, in yeah. a loving way. You know, I didn't feel great at the time, but mm. definitely had a love for me and my best interest. And obviously, mm. he's got a plan for my life and, and trying to show me what that is. Yeah, uh, and I didn't know what that was in that in that experience in that, that time. But mm. uh, yeah, kind of a, a crazy summer. Um, yeah, jobs wise, we can get into that if you want. Um, yeah, ended up uh, up here in Minnesota, just trying to really seek out community, yeah. find people that that would really um, pour into me and be there for me and help me through a, a challenging time of grief and uh, you know processing through the loss of a, a relationship um, and, and kind of that's a hard thing, right? Especially mm-hmm. when you're you're planning for marriage with somebody. Yeah, um, a good thing now re- reflecting on it. Um, mm. Definitely no hard feelings or anything like that. But um, you know, it's a part of my story, and he used that to kind of put me in a place, you know, that I wouldn't have gone any other way. And yeah, uh, I definitely wouldn't have ended up at Northwestern like I did this past year, and mm. uh, just the way he's worked over the past year in my life. You know, reflecting now. Um, in July of 23 of the people and the relationships and the experiences I've had while I've been here. And, Hmm. um, it was definitely his plan. Um, but definitely a time of just teaching me, like I'm not in control. Like I, 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 there's nothing we can do, um, to, to try to, to change what he has planned for us. And I think I also during that time, something I I spent a lot of time with my girls this year talking about, um, really trying to be vulnerable with them is, Hey, like God can take our anger a little bit. Like yeah. <laughs> he's strong enough to hold that. Like I was angry with God for sure. Yeah. Uh, especially within, you know, the first couple of weeks after, um, you know, the split and, um, very angry, not understanding. And, mm. and there's a sense of, you know, I, I'm being prideful and I'm trying to, to plan my own path and, mm. um, you know, a pruning process it's, yeah. it's necessary. And so, um, got over that eventually, obviously. And yeah, understand that God's working in it and and all those Mm. things and trusting him, you know, not passively, actively trusting him and and taking steps to show that, but, um, definitely a a time of healing and and Mm. growth in that. But yeah, thanks for sharing on that, Kyle. And and I think too, what I, what I love, I mean, I don't love what happened to you, but I I think what I love about your story is now you have such an incredibly mature perspective um, about it, right? And, and that's obviously what the listeners just heard from you and um, even what God was, was teaching you and how you see that now, um, obviously as a loving uh, pruning process, as you mentioned. And, um, you know, I think that the follow-up question, and you might have answered it already, um, but what did God teach you about, one, your relationship with Him, and two, your purpose in life through that challenge? 
Yeah, I think it just goes again of just like the lack of control we have. And, mm. uh, you know, I don't know who's listening to this or whatever, but some people from my time at Taylor would be laughing like, Kyle had a plan, like he had it all planned out. Like he was, he yeah. knew what he was doing, you know, like he had the process down, you know, he had mm. this, 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 and then this was going to lead here. And then, you know, you know that, that was me. I'm type A. Yeah. Um, I'm a coach. So it's good. Um, but yeah, that, no, <laughs> that's not how God works. You know, yeah. that's, uh, you know, I can, I can plan all I want, you know. Um, I remember, you know, being super young um, when I was an undergrad and like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to get a GA of two years. And after that, I'm going to be a Dobo. And after that, I'm going to be assistant coach for five years. And then I'll be a head coach at a D2 and then move back to a D1. It's like, you, <laughs> who knows, man? Like, right. you, you don't know how it's going to work out. And, um, you know, that's something definitely this past year and all of my decisions, not just my career, it's just like, you have to go to him with open hands and say, Hey, it's your will, it's your way and your timing. You're you're gonna open doors. Mm. Um, and you know, I'm gonna vet those doors and go down the process. And if there's something yeah. I desire, you know, really be mindful in prayer about it and try to to seek out what your will is. Um, but mm. yeah, it, just that that surrendering that I think is a lifetime journey. Yeah. Us continuing to surrender to him. There's people out there that, you know, they they've I won't say mastered it, but they're really good at it. And just mm. naturally just being able to um, very practically in the moment, just surrender. And yeah. that's something still that I, I struggle with. And mm-hmm. But that process of really uh, surrendering to his will and, and understanding that we don't know what that looks like right now, Yeah, uh, but it is what he has for us. And at the end of the day, that's that's what we should want for our lives. And mm. um, if you would have asked me 14 months ago, if... I would ever be at Covenant College. I would have said no. So, but here we are. That's so. amazing how he works, man. <laughs> it's amazing how he works. And, you know, your story makes me think of, you know, obviously a popular Bible story and character is Joseph. Um, you know, obviously he's talked about quite a bit, uh, especially in comparison with hard times. But you think about uh, Genesis fifty twenty. you know, this is to set the, the scene is, you know, Joseph is talking to his brothers and his brothers are asking him for forgiveness and have offered themselves as slaves to Joseph for what they did to him, right, of giving him as a slave to Egypt. And Joseph replies with, what you intended for evil and God intended for good for the saving of many lives, which is now happening. Uh, it's Genesis fifty twenty, And the beautiful thing is, you know, Joseph was put into slavery in Egypt, but God actually used Joseph's wisdom in his position within Egypt to save many from a seven-year-long, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, famine. Mm-hmm. Um, and you think about just the trial, right? The the scene that is is there of his brothers betraying him. It's it's so evil, and Joseph could have held a lot of anger in that. But he he saw the the perspective of like, hey, like God used it, and a lot of people were saved because of what God did in my suffering. So I think this is a, a relatable story, right? A, a relatable story of your um, struggles, your season of challenge um, being played out in Scripture. So. I think it's very, very similar, very relatable. For sure. And Kyle, back on the basketball front of things, you know, you spent a season working with the University of Northwestern St. Paul as a women's basketball assistant coach. And with Taylor, you were on the men's side. So we'd love for you to share what was that transition like going from working with men um, and then now working and coaching with women? Yeah, no, uh, obviously very big change. Same sport, different sport. Totally. Um, <laughs> totally. Uh, obviously enjoyed, you know, being on the men's side. Um, obviously I, I am a man, so uh, this is all I knew growing up and, right. and that's great. It's yeah. high level of competition, athleticism, shooting, skill, all those things. That's great. Um, you know, a lot of people when, when they're transitioning in professionally in basketball, there, there's always, I think, an opportunity um, you know, to switch, um, mm-hmm. go over to the women's side from the men's side. And mm-hmm. some people weary away from it. Um, I don't think I was ever in that boat. Um, some people really struggle with that. Like, there's also a stigma of, Hey, if you go to the women's side, you can never get back to the men's side. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's true. Um, yeah. but it, it's something that, you know, I did process or I did ask my mentors about, mm-hmm. um, I did think that who I was as a person and how I wanted to use basketball probably fit on the woman's side a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and, and I had some mentors tell me that and encourage me in that way. And so, yeah, it just kind of came about uh, as I, I was processing again last summer after, you know, the change and everything, a kind of the whirlwind, uh, trying to figure out what was next. And so, um, you know, the opportunity was presented to me. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that me and um, Coach Call, uh, my boss at Northwestern, had talked about during the kind of the interview process of, 
know, what that looks like. And uh, mm. I think how I use basketball, how I want to use basketball is to really pour into other people uh, and disciple really well yeah. um, and, and just help prepare them to go into the world and have an impact. Mm. And so uh, I really, really value relationships and yeah. one-on-one time with my girls. Mm. Um, if any of my girls are listening to this, they'll, they'll be able to tell you. Lunches, one-on-one, playing pig before practice, like that's who I am. I care about them so much more as a person mm. uh, than I do about a stupid little basketball going through a hoop. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so th- that, that took care of some of the fear there. Um, there was a transition on court. Uh, again, my girls will laugh at me if they're hearing this, but the first three weeks of last season were rough. Um, it's just a different approach with yeah. girls and guys. And so, um, you know, I came in definitely as a men's coach for the first three weeks. And uh, I quickly learned that that was not going to work. It was not going to fly. And so yeah. I adjusted throughout time uh, just how you approach certain things how you do the day-to-day, what mattered to them, mm. uh, just growing as a coach, you know, on the women's side. And uh, it's still growing, for sure. It's only one year, so yeah. still a lot of growth there to go. But really, really enjoyed uh, the women's side. And, and it's just, it's very different. Yeah, um, well, of course. Better in a lot of ways, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would say probably not as fast, not as skilled, not as physical. And that's okay with me. Um, mm. I, I, again, Coach Andrews at, at Taylor, he always talks about when you're making decisions – or when you've made a decision, you're trying to evaluate um, those things. Uh, really trying to, you know, listen to the spirit. And when he, one of the things he always talks about is uh, kind of that story of mm. uh, Jesus and Mary's womb and the jump and the excitement that happens there. So yeah. He always tells us, um, you know, you're you're waiting to to feel the baby jump. And so, you know, I would connect with him over the phone throughout the year and things like that. Mm. And when I told him I had taken this this job at Covenant. He said that he definitely could see that the baby was jumping in me. And just mm-hmm. I had a passion for coaching young ladies. And awesome, um, yeah. so it was very fulfilling year for me. Um, I told I told the girls, this, this is the most fun I've ever had in basketball wow. uh, this past year. And I've had a lot of good experiences. Obviously, we had some success, uh, you know, second NCAA tournament in uh, uh, program history and, wow. and won the conference, things like that. That's great. But um, just the way they loved each other and really cared about each other mm-hmm. and uh, coming together to, to work towards something bigger than ourselves and it wasn't without you know mistakes and things yeah. like that we definitely grew out throughout the year but yeah, yeah just super fulfilling year really really enjoyed it love those girls hmm. hopefully those girls will you know stay uh, those relationships will stay in place for a long time maybe a little different now but hmm. for sure thanks for sharing on that kyle and i think what i love about that testimony for you is taking a leap of faith in a lot of ways of leaving something you knew leaving something you loved, you know, to your point earlier, right, maybe not always risking, you know, the rest of your career being on that side of, of the sport. But uh, obviously, as you mentioned, it was the most fun you had in your time coaching and has led to a head coaching role. Um, and so I think it, just to encourage the listeners, right, sometimes taking that chance on something you're wary about is actually a great move. So I think it's a, a good learning point for the listeners as well. Right, and I, I would even add to that and say, like, hey, like when you're making decisions like that, you can't make decisions out of fear. Um, yeah, I, we we might get into this with with me and and come my head coach at Covenant, but yeah, um, you, you can't make your decisions as a fear out of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, right. you know, whatever if it's you know uh, career decisions, relationship decisions, life decisions, mm. spiritual decisions, whatever it is. Yeah, um, you, you need to take it to the Lord, put it at His feet, pray through it. And then make a decision out of confidence that yeah. you know you can attack rather than say, hey, like, here are the concerns I have. Like, obviously, mm. discern those things. And if there's right. some serious red flags, follow those. And, mm-hmm. and, but listen to the spirit and don't act out of fear. It's mm. the biggest thing there. Absolutely. And Kyle, as you just mentioned, as I mentioned in the introduction, you are stepping into a really exciting role as a head coach at Covenant College, Covenant College Excuse me, with the women's team. My question is, is twofold. How has the Lord prepared you for this opportunity? Obviously, going from student assistant to assistant and out to head coach running a program, that's that's a big jump. Uh, and then as well, what led you to landing this position? Yeah, um, it is exciting. Um, it's a new step. It's a, it's a new challenge. It's different for me. Um, something that obviously I've been prepare for, preparing for for a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I think in terms of, the, of being ready and what's prepared me well, uh, just a lot of kudos to, to Josh Andrews and Aaron Call. Um, Josh Andrews at Taylor, he, again, he discipled me so well for four years. He gave me opportunity to learn, uh, really it, being able to, to soak up everything that goes into leading a college mm. program. 
he's a great man of faith, um, very, very uh, high integrity, doing things the right way. Yeah. Um, he's very structured. He knows the way he wants to do things. Um, and just being able to learn under him for four years and, and really ask questions. And, um, you know, he was super open to conversation and helping me learn in the moment Hmm. Uh, and i think he could even say over my four years i grew a ton yeah Um, that put me in a position obviously to step into um you know this role last year with aaron and you know you should kudos to aaron uh the the story of how i stepped into that role is a cool one we could talk about that another time but yeah um me and aaron didn't know each other at all uh we we met for my interview we had talked for like five minutes before that on the phone um he didn't know why I was coming. I was coming from a weird spot, and uh, it's a long story. But we didn't have any relationship at mm-hmm. all, and so uh, coming into you know transitioning to the women's side, yeah. he really gave me uh, an opportunity to really coach and wow. really take ownership of. You know, our, our defense was a big thing that I took ownership of. Yeah, but really recruit, really do all of our scouting reports, um, and, and really, really have a big impact on our team this year in a variety of ways and grow as a coach mm. uh, and learn different things, learn outside of Coach Andrew's system. Uh, I had a great, you know, four years there and learned a ton. I liked mm. what we were doing. Uh, but to hear somebody else and hear different approach, obviously the women's side's a different game. Totally. And there's some differences in, in learning that way. Um, yeah, so those two people really just give me an opportunity to learn and grow. I practically have hands-on experience. Mm. Um, and I think anybody who knows me would say because of my background, um, I, I tend to have a little bit more of a, a mature approach to some things. Um, you know, with the beard and everything, people always say, there's no way you're under 30. Uh, I'm 25, so I'm <laughs> definitely under 30. So, yeah. Um, But, yeah, ex- I've had a chance to experience some cool things. It, it doesn't mm. feel like I've only been an assistant for one year. It feels like it's been five or six years. Yeah, um, I was actually, uh, you know, tying up close ends and um, – finishing up here well with Aaron yesterday and uh, we were saying goodbye and everything's the last chance I could see him before I leave and he even said to me in, in our meetings it doesn't feel like you've been here for one year it feels like well, a lot more than that so mm. uh, we had a great relationship and, and we worked really well together and grew and uh, all those things and built something really special and I'm excited for them this year but mm. yeah um, new opportunity uh, I don't I'm not going to act like I have all the answers it's going to yeah. be a lot of reliance on the Lord and prayer and Awesome. Uh, my staff and the people at Covenant, um, but it seems like we have some really great girls. I've gotten to connect with them a little mm-hmm. bit over the phone and things like that. Um, have a chance to uh, do something special this year and uh, really build something up over time that can really be a good experience for those girls mm-hmm. and have some success on the court, but more importantly, important to them and, and mm-hmm. have them have a, a really good you know experience where they're being poured into spiritually. So mm-hmm. My biggest concern. So absolutely, you know, Kyle, and really what I think got me excited for this podcast is for the listener to see full circle God's faithfulness, right? You know, you, you mentioned earlier the challenge, the season of difficulty has now resulted in a really exciting new season, right? Um, not what you expected coming out of Taylor, but it is something else um, that is awesome and exciting and being a head coach and leading a program and doing it on the women's side, which probably you never thought of prior to um, this year with Northwestern. So I'm encouraged um, by you, um, obviously knowing you pretty well, I think, uh, there's no man better for the job and, and I know you're ready for it. So excited for you there, brother. And again, for the listener, um, a good lesson that a season of trial does not mean the end of a story. Um, in fact, it could mean that a whole new story is being written, which is really cool. So and I, I would even that. add to that and say, you know, it, you look at it from, you know, an outside perspective, somebody that, that isn't in my shoes right now and say, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, you know, you go through everything you went through the last year and you have a good year at Northwestern and go to the NCAAs and then you get a head job. Like, that's the dream, right? Like, right. you mapped it out like that, didn't you? No, it, it's 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 not like that. Mm. And, uh, I think even accepting this job, you know, I'm, I'm super excited. It's a great opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I'm super thankful for Coach Hurdy and, and the administration at Covenant for the opportunity. But it's been <laughs> it's been a hard process. And yeah. I think it's a, a testament of God's faithfulness and um of you know leaving this place and leaving my girls and the relationships i have here mm. uh i've just been thinking that a lot about that a lot the last couple of weeks it's just people really matter to me here mm. and to think where i was a, a year ago uh, of a lack of community and, and trying to scramble to, to figure mm. life out um just it, i think it's a really cool testimony to or a testament to to how God works and how He's going to provide. Yeah. You know, He provided all these relationships and these people um, for me to to grow with and 
spend time with and grow with and love on and all, all these things here yeah. over the last year. And it's something I know you and I had conversations about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was scrambling for and trying to grab. And um, so, yes, you know, I'm excited for the next step, but leaving this one, it, it's a cool testimony of the work he's done and, and yeah. his faithfulness in my life, even when it doesn't seem like it. So. Amen. I love that perspective, brother. So good. And, and lastly, Kyle, for any of our listeners who are going through a challenging season similar to yours, of life right now, what encouragement or advice would you give them? Yeah, I think the first thing um, I would always say, and this is in coaching too, is I, I want them to know that it's okay to feel how they're feeling. Mm. Uh, if that's anger, if that's sadness, if that's frustration, anxiety, mm. stress, whatever it is, like that's okay to feel like that. Um, you know, I feel like so so much nowadays with mental health and things like that, we want to try to figure out how to fix it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's awesome. You also yeah. gotta feel it. Like you're feeling it for a reason. Totally. Um, you know, so so it's okay to feel those things. Spend some time and, and feel those things and, and don't get frustrated with yourself for feeling those things. Mm. Uh but also trust in the Lord. He it's so easy to say, you know. Yeah. Uh trust in the Lord, but uh yeah. he does have a plan for you. Um mm. you're not gonna know what it looks like, uh, you know, up front and it's probably not gonna look like what you want it to look like. And that's okay. Mm. Uh the plan that he has in place for you, you have to trust it is much better than anything you yeah. create for yourself. If again, if you would have told me fourteen months ago I'd be a head coach right now, I would have called you crazy. Yeah. Um but yeah, it, it's just really spending time in the word, getting to know the Lord, getting uh, you know, building your relationship with him and spending time in the word and worship and, and having good people around you to, to pour into you and point you back to Christ is, is really important. And, um, you're going to get through it. It's going to be okay. You yeah. can take your anger. You yeah. Know, if you're, if you're angry, he can take that. If you're sad, he can take that. Mm. Uh, you can bring that to him and he can hold that. Um, you know, he, he's strong enough to do that, but, yeah. um, there, there is a reason for it. There is a pruning process. There, there is a, mm. a, a light at the end of the tunnel and, and just keep pushing through life, having people around you to pour into you and, seeking that out and it'll be okay so that's good man i love that that point you made too of you know it's easy to say trust in the lord it's a lot harder to actually do it um you know and i think one thing that encourages me and i love reading the gospels for this reason is how many times the followers of christ the disciples fell short Mm -hmm. and how many times he had to correct them it happens all the time right you think about small things like Peter saying, Jesus, no, you're not going to die. And Jesus like, get behind me, Satan. Like, whoa, you know, that's like a, that's a hard rebuke. Or even Peter just denying Jesus three times. And um, Timothy not believing, or not Timothy, sorry, um, Thomas not believing that Jesus actually was um, risen again. And I mean, there's just so many failures that Jesus is like, yeah, let me just show you. Uh, I, I got you, right? He's going to lead us. So I'm encouraged by that. You know, scripture is a great place to go for encouragement. But yeah, love that brother. It's awesome. You know, Kyle, and it's been a pleasure for me. You know, you were one of the first people I interacted with here, uh, May of 2021, my first assignment of the Impact Weekend in Atlanta. Uh, and it's been cool to watch you on this journey. So encouraged by you, encouraged by your story, and I'm um, wishing you luck and providing you with prayer as you enter this new season. For sure. Thanks. Appreciate it. If you want to get involved with Uncommon Sports Group and the mission that we are on to help you navigate the sport industry as followers of Christ, apply for our academy on our website at uncommonsg.org. That's uncommonsg.org. Be sure to catch new episodes of the Uncommon Podcast every other week on Thursdays at midnight Eastern time. Until next time, we pray that you will strive to be uncommon by glorifying the name of God in whatever you may do. See you next time.